Welcome to the Sportscast, July 9th, 2018. If you haven't yet, please subscribe on YouTube or on iTunes. And if you're on iTunes, please leave us a rating and a review. It will help us out tremendously for people to find us. And also, this podcast is sponsored by Insta Bible. It is the mobile app for your Bible needs. What a weekend. Friday and Saturday, we witnessed the quarterfinals. And on Saturday, we witnessed uh, a a penalty shootout between Croatia and Russia. Croatia made it out. They won the uh, the shootout 4-3. And they were tied 2-2. Um, and now we're going to the semis. Now, George Montoya is is here here in the sportscast. Welcome. Hey, what's up, man? So, George, you know, it seems like Croatia has made it to the semis, but it seems like they're getting weaker. They're probably banged up. Um, do you think Croatia had a poor performance against Russia, or just Russia was the home team and they just played a good game? No, man, I think they're both pretty evenly matched. Obviously, both, you know, as underdogs, but, um, but I mean, I, yeah, out of the four, out of the four teams, I think they have Croatia as the uh, least one to pass, I guess. Yes, uh, Russia scored their first goal. I was surprised, but the goal was pretty good. Uh, the player came in and uh, outside the box, he shot it far and scored the goal. Um, and then after that, um, you know, Croatia tied it up. They had to come back quick. You know, when you're down a goal, you got to come back quick. And then they tied it. And then in extra time, uh, Croatia, you know, uh, they scored a header uh, from Vita and made it 2-1. And yeah. then last minute of extra time, Russia tied it. I was like, oh, man. And then, you know. Then right there, I think Russia just had it, and I think Croatia. It seems like it seems like Croatia has been getting weaker throughout the tournament. You think? I don't know, man. I don't know about that. I mean, like, I think the obviously the farther you go, the harder the teams are, and the more you have to fight. Um, but yeah, the Vita goal was was pretty. I mean, it was kind of a, a header, but it was a header, but it was like such a slow. Header like down low, and it was, could have easily been blocked. It could have easily been deflected by a defender, but it kind of just like went right through everyone. And, like, but like everyone's reaction was a lot slower. Everyone was just kind of tired, and you know, I don't think that that goal would have made it. It was early in the game. It was kind of weird, but then the Fernandez header, you know, was was amazing. Uh, it was such a great goal. Like kind of remind me of the Mina goal from Colombia against England. Very similar. So. I was. I thought. I thought. I thought. Um. Russia had the. I guess the momentum going into the penalties after that. You know. Um. But eventually, Fernand is a hero. Uh, for a little while, was the one that actually shot a very bad penalty. I went wide left when he shot it and uh, missed it, and that was really the end of it there. You know that Fernandez lived in Russia for five years. He. Um. He was born, like originally from Brazil, moved to Russia. He. He was playing for CSK Moscow, and then. I think last October or six months ago, Russia asked him to become a citizen so so like he can play for Russia. Yeah, I heard about that. Um, but so he's only been playing for their national team, I guess. What just recently? I mean, yeah, because I know, I guess he, he never got called in for Brazil. Right? I never remember seeing him ever play for Brazil. Well, no, I mean Brazil's pretty stacked, and I bet if he went to CSK yeah. Moscow to play soccer, which Russia doesn't have a good soccer league, it, it's let's just say MLS is better than Russia. Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> you know, it's one of those things where, hey, if you have an opportunity to become a citizen for your country and your own country doesn't want you, um, then you got to go for it. I mean, the World Cup is only, like, only every four years. He became a hero uh, for that moment. Um, and it reminds me of Diego Costa too. Um, he was born, uh, he was born in Brazil for some reason. Brazil didn't want him. Yeah. And then Spain took him. Yeah. I mean, Brazil is just like a powerhouse, man. They have, they're so deep, you know, and the system they play and you know, even if you're a good player, if you don't really fit in the system or, or, or if you're positioned exactly, it's stacked like a forward or a center. I mean, a left back, right back, you know, it's, it's hard to make the team, but, Fernandez actually played really well throughout the whole tournament. I really liked him. Uh, unfortunately, he missed that that uh, penalty in the end. But 
I really like them. I think it's one of the bright spots for um, Russia going forward. Croatia has 65% ball possession to 35 ball possession. Croatia had 18 shots on the goal versus 13. Um, and past success, Russia, Croatia had better than Russia. Um, I think Croatia had a good, good squad. They had Modric and Radetic. It feels like they like that. Uh, that they, they like that goal. It feels like they like that offense. They have a good midfield, but they like that final touch. Um, we'll see what happens against England. But uh, speaking about England, England versus Sweden, it was pretty much an easy match for England. I mean, England uh, won the match 2-0, um, and it was a goal uh, by Jesse Lingard. No, sorry, Harry Maguire by header, and then Deli Ali. Um, made it 2-0 on a header. Um, do you think England, I mean, was Sweden pretty weak, or was England, like, had momentum from the Columbia match? I mean, Sweden is a team that really, like, prides themselves on defense, and once they went down early on, 1-0, and then, like, you know, then 2-0, like, they really don't have the offensive firepower to actually... Um, come back in those games. Maybe one zero they might be, but two zero is kinda of stretch. And um remember once once they were done like that they had to, they had to open up their game in order to come back and allowed, you know, England to even attack more and had a lot they could have easily been more. I think it'd have been three zero or four zero really. I mean they they missed some easy goal attempts there. Um Sterling too, you know, he didn't he had some wide open guys and he didn't even pass them. But um but I mean England is more uh I guess more balanced team and they have more star power. So um, I thought I thought it was going to be a little closer, but yeah, I mean England pulled it off. So yeah, uh, England had fifty eight percent ball possession. Um, England had uh, had total shots on goal versus Sweden to six. Um, eight, uh, England had eighty percent um, um, had success to Sweden's seventy two percent. You know. After watching this game, it felt like it, like it was less physical than the Colombia match, and I was thinking maybe Colombia could have beaten Sweden. Yeah, of course. I mean, it, it was kind of obvious that for one England and Colombia game where we're going to beat Sweden. Um, so that's the thing. I, I think you know Colombia lost a huge opportunity to to make it through, but uh, but yeah, I mean that was the easier side of the bracket. I mean. So that 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 was dead. Colombia and England had a great shot to make the final four. You know? uh, Sweden. The only good player that I noticed was Lindelof. He plays for Manchester United. Uh, Berg had a good few touches. Um, Raheem Sterling. Um, he hasn't scored a goal for England. Do you think um, he's okay up top starting? Ah, uh, I don't know, man. He. I mean, I, I think they're going to play him, but. Yeah, he hasn't been that well. He had some good opportunities and hasn't really um, done much with them. So, um, I don't know, man. I think England, uh, it's not as, as good as they could be. I think they're still trying to get figured out, get better. Um, but um, they're still the favorite against Croatia. So, um, you know, we'll see what happens. Yeah, and uh, it's, it's something that I think uh, England has an opportunity to go to the final. Um, here's my prediction. Croatia is banged up. They've been to two straight penalty kick shootouts. That hasn't been done since 1990 when Argentina did it. Um, I think they're banged up. Do you think England is? I mean, has a good chance of winning this match? I think so. I mean, I think they do. Uh, I wouldn't. Hey, it might be Croatia three penalties back to back to back. I mean, you know, like it, you know, Croatia's still a resilient team. I think they fight hard. I think Modric. I mean, I love that guy. He's he, I don't know how how much stamina this guy has, but this guy is just incredible. The way he 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 fights for those balls and he go plays defense and he just he just feels like he doesn't give up and he's relentless. I think he's been the guy that put everything together for Croatia and the goalie has been playing really great. I, I mean, he got kind of hurt. I think he's hamstring towards the end of the game, so I don't know how um, how fit he'll be for the match. But I remember the backup goalie who played that one game. I think they rested the star goalie. I forgot his name, but I think with the S Stanley or something like that. Next, he he played really well. So I think they have solid goalkeepers, and um, I don't I don't like to write Croatia off. I'm rooting for them to win, but 
But I think it'll be a lot closer match. I don't think Croatia is the weakest suite, so um, they have way more firepower. I think they're, the Croatia's weakness is really their forwards. Um, they're all kind of – they don't really have a star-star guy there. They kind of rotate around all these three different guys they have there. Um, so he's really kind of a toss-up to see which guy shows up, you know. Yeah, uh, that's one thing that I've noticed is that they have a good, uh, uh, great goalkeeper, great defense, and great midfield. And back to the goalkeeper – you know, once he hurt his hamstring, I thought they were gonna, you know, uh, substitute him, you know, with with like with like the backup uh, goalkeeper. But he chose to stay in. I, I mean, I give him all credit for that. Yeah, I remember that. I I thought it was really risky, man, because the the game could could have was a good shot. It was like a penalty, so I was like, man, I don't know. If you want to actually have that guy there? Penalty. That's why I gave Russia an edge because of that. I thought he was hurt, and I was like, man, that's not good, man. If you, you know, but um, but it took one for the team, man. It's strong, you know. Uh, you, you know, you played it. I, I really thought Russia was gonna win it, but um, yeah. Let's just hope he'll. I mean, I'm sure he'll play, but um, but yeah. I mean, let's see what happens. It'll be a, a fun match. It should be a good one. At the other side of the bracket, France versus Belgium. How do you see this match? Um, I think France is gonna win it. I'm gonna stick with my prediction. I think France is gonna uh, win it all. Belgium looks pretty. You know, has some firepower against Belgium, but how do you see this match, George? And I think it's a be very uh, even match. Um, I mean, I think beginning some people were saying Belgium was a favorite, but not really. France is, I think. Um, the both teams are actually when you think about. Them, they're all they have a lot of young stars in their teams. They they have good goalkeepers, uh, solid defenses. I mean, I think France has slightly. Uh, well, not slight. I think they have a much better defense, even though Belgium with with company back, they've been doing better. But I think one of their main guys is out for the game. Uh, I forgot his name. Uh, I think Mbappe. Plays, uh, no, no, no. He's not playing. Mbappe is not playing. He's suspended no, for a yellow card. Ooh, see, yeah. So Mbappe and also no, uh, Belgium too. One Belgium. of the guys in the back at end. Let me see. I forgot his, his name. Out. But yeah, you're right. There is a player out. Um, I'll definitely look that up. Um, with Mbappe out, you got a uh, yellow. Yeah, oh, you got a yellow. With I'll, 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 I'll be doing the research right now. Um, with Mbappe out, do you think France is in trouble, or do you think France has enough weapons to take care of that hole? <clears throat> oh, I mean, that's a huge, huge hit. Um, I I don't know. I, I like I like France more. I think they're more composed. Belgium. I mean, Fletcher has a great firepower, man, but I just love, love how France is playing defense. I, I love their, their left and their right backs playing, their, you know, center backs. They all played such a great tournament. Um, I think, I think at this point, Pogba has to, he has to step up if, you know, Mbappe is not playing. So, like, I think he's really the only the biggest disappointment from France is him, you know, Pogba. He hasn't really done much. Um, he's the one that has to step up. Um, he, he also the forward, what's his name? Uh, Giroud, how you pronounce it? Giroud. Yeah, Giroud. Yeah, him. He um, he hasn't really not been a big, big factor either. Um, so, um, I think these guys have to step up, and I think France is. I just I just find a little firepower. I mean, Belgium is actually playing better. I was really surprised they um, they uh, beat Brazil. I, I wasn't expecting that to happen. Really. Me either. We're in the same page. We're both sports fanatics. I thought Brazil was going to win this. Yeah, it was kind of a – yeah, I mean, they, they executed their, their game plan. I think uh, Lukaku, you know, he, he played really well. He exposed them, and um, Kevin De Bruyne, he did really good. And they're all – I mean, Brazil just, I guess, got caught off guard. I mean, they didn't expect to, to have that, and, and Marcelo kind of got pinned back. He wasn't able to attack as much because they were kept exposing uh, the flank over there. So, um yeah, man. I mean, I, I guess I remember we talked before the World Cup started. I was like, look, man, Belgium is a team that has, they're set to make a run. It's just that they have matters. Um, and now, look, going forward in the tournament, man, I think that Japan game uh, sets the limits. I think they said, you know what, oh, we got to get it together. So um, I don't know, man. I, I won't, I won't root it for France to win it, but I won't, I won't be surprised if Belgium wins. You know, I don't think yeah. it'll be a big upside. I think Belgium is just as good as. France, you know, the only player suspended, and he is from Belgium, is um, is is uh, is Thomas uh, Müller or Miner Müller. He's a uh, yeah. he's a defensive yeah. guy. 
you got to use them as a defensive back or even like yeah, defensive midfielder sometimes. So they have to change. I think they're going to change the lineup a, a, a lot depending on who they have because I think he plays a huge role for their team. Um, so yeah, I mean defensively, I think Belgium. You know, it, it needs need some help, but um, I, I don't know, man. I, they always play with just three defensive players in the back. I don't know. I, I, I'm surprised they're, you know, they play with, like, what? Is it, is it five midfielders, right? Yeah, five Usually, midfielders. You know, someone go back to Yeah, it's, uh, it's a 3-5-1 lineup with Lukaku by himself up top. So I think they're going to switch that up a little bit. But um, but uh, guess what? Yeah, I yeah, was I'm wrong. Really... I don't think Mbappe is suspended for tomorrow. That's what I'm saying. I, I, I didn't really even know. I didn't hear about that, so I'm surprised yeah. you said that. Um, Got the wrong information. Yeah, Sorry. So he's Only that, the right? guy from Belgium is Thomas Brunner, which I think I think whoever is a substitute would be fine. But no, not really. He's a defensive guy. That could be an issue. <laughs> yeah, no, they, no, they, they play him, man. They use him well. I mean, I think he, he, he's one of those guys that's really key um, to the team. And I mean, one of those guys that, you know, rock solid for the back end. So yeah, Bappa is playing. I know. I know you said that I was. I was. I didn't really hear about that, but um, I haven't really kept up with the yellow cards and stuff. But yeah, and Bappa has been. You know, he's been a star. You know, he's really fast, very uh, accurate player. Um, really like to kind of start off slow, but I mean, I think feels like France and Belgium. Like I said, they, they France did kind of struggle offensively in the group stages, and they just got better and better throughout the tournament. Um, they're more composed. And then Belgium as well. I think the Japan scare was was pretty remarkable. And then like they they had that that you know that uh, perseverance in the end to kind of pull through. They scored three goals so quick, you know. So it just shows how how good Belgium is. If you fall asleep on them, they'll just eat you up, you know. So um, it's very it's very close game. I mean, uh, I, I think France has a slight edge, but anything can happen, right? Anything can happen. This World Cup is Russia. Anything can happen. Um, would you still start Fellaini and Chadley? I think I think you you do, man. Um, I think those two guys they're the reason why they didn't come back. They came back into Japan. Um, they aren't popular choices. I've heard that they weren't not really played that well with their clubs recently, mm-hmm. but they've been you know uh, good players in the past, and uh, the coach made that move and it worked out for them. I mean, yeah, you're right. They're deep. I think they have a deep bench. So. So, yeah. Yeah, you're right. Uh, Fellaini is the unlikely hero for Belgium because he had a horrible season with Man United. Chadley plays in a lower level. I mean, he plays in the Premier League, but the team is not that good. I mean, it's West Brom. I think they got regulated uh, after this past season. So um, it's, 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 it's interesting how Benjamin, you know, like how deep their squad is. But anyone on the bench should start, you know. So uh, we'll see what happens. Score wise, who do you have? France, Belgium. Uh, man, it's kind of hard, man. Because I, I, I could see the way I could see it high being a high scoring game, but I, I could also see it being a low scoring game, kind of like you know. Because uh, I'm, so, I'm not really sure how they're gonna play the game in the sense of they're gonna be fast paced, or they want to control the ball and just counter, you know, like like. Or they're gonna just go back and forth. It could be like that, uh, you know. But um, I would take a limb and say France three two against Belgium. Or either way, I think it's gonna be something like that. Five goals, four goals, four or five goals. I'm saying France two one. I don't think it'd be high scoring. I think well, you know, there will be high offenses. I mean, both teams have good offense, but also good defense. But I think that Belgium guy being suspended might be a, like a big issue for Belgium. I think uh, I think France has the edge, to be honest, and the, and and it's interesting because the Belgium guy plays for uh, plays for PSG, so which is in France. So it's interesting how the irony is behind that. And I have I have France winning two one, maybe I can't say three one. Semifinals are not that well, except like the last World Cup seven one, but that's that's a rarity. Um, and who do you have? Croatia, England. Yeah, no, I have to go get them because it beat Colombia. You know, I just don't want them to win, but <laughs> they are the favorites. Um, but I think it's going to be one of those. It's going to be one of those games. You know, I uh, like a one zero, maybe two one, two zero kind of game. I, I mean, it's going to be like maybe two goals. You know, but I don't know. I have a feeling that Croatia is going to win. You know, I just, I just feel like the, that team has been fought so hard every game, and they, 
He's always, always pulled it through. And I think, um, actually, the history of Croatia and the World Cup, I mean, I think they, they made a Final Four maybe before once. Uh, I could be wrong, but yes, in 1998. They won it before, have they? Yes, they went to this uh, 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 to the semifinals against France in 1998, and they played uh, and they played against France, but they lost two one. Yeah, so this is time to make history because out of the out of the four teams, obviously France has won, and England has won like way back when, and Belgium hasn't, right? Belgium has not won the World Cup. The only teams that won it in the final four is, um, has been France and England. France has won in 1998. England won it in 1966. Yeah, so, and what's the farthest Belgium ever gone? Is this it or? Um, quarterfinals. No, no, they've been the semifinals against Argentina in 1986. Wow. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 uh, I, I think Croatia is going to win, but, you know, like I said, it's, it's one, these games are going to be very close. Um, I mean, I think it, it, I'll be shocked if this happens, but obviously everyone kind of says, you know, whoever wins from everyone, where, whoever wins from France, Belgium doesn't win at all. Like the, everyone kind of down, right side of the bracket, everyone was like, ah, they're not going to win the World Cup because they're just weaker, you know, and they did. But, um, you know, what think do you so. think about that? Like, I don't think so. I, I think like the final changes everything, the whole dynamic, the atmosphere, the ambience. I think it's anyone's game on the final. I've seen some teams that were not favorite in the final win it, like France and Brazil 98, even though France was a home team. There's a lot of variables going on here. And and I even thought Argentina was going to be Germany uh, four years ago. So, no, um, I think the final is 50-50, no matter who it is. So who do you think is going to – so you go oh, for yeah. England, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, France, uh, for France – for England, Croatia, I'm going for England. England um, is young. They're healthy. Croatia's banged up. I really look at that really closely. Yeah. Um, England has some momentum in, uh, like on the side. The fans are, are really excited. They got the weapons. And I say this one more time. They have Harry Kane. That's it. Harry Kane. Yeah, he, yeah he's, been, he's been very very good. And I'm going to say this. They might just win by one goal, 1-0. One That's it. Yeah, exactly. I, I, it's be one of those games is very, very close. So, um. Yeah, you know, I don't know. I, I don't know which World Cup like final I want to watch: France, 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 or uh, England, or Belgium, or Croatia, Belgium, or England. I think I think Belgium, Croatia feels like a low key. I don't know. It doesn't feel like an uh, like an amazing final, you know. But we should see <laughs> what happens. Uh, the semifinals begin tomorrow, France versus Belgium at 2 o'clock, July 10th. And then on Wednesday, July 11th, Croatia versus England. They only had a few days of rest, I think three days, which is very little time in the soccer world. But if, you're, but if, you, play, if you play in the Premier League, that's normal. Um, George, how can people reach you? An email, Matt, eternal. 1288 at gmail.com or you can just send a comment on the comments on YouTube. And you can reach me at Sleon at S-L-E-O-N on Twitter and on Instagram. And uh, and remember, this podcast is sponsored by InstaBible. It is the way to read your Bible uh, with scenery. You can download it on instabibleapp.com. And if you haven't yet, please subscribe on YouTube, Periscope, and iTunes. And if you're in iTunes, leave a rating and a review. It could help us out tremendously. George, World Cup is coming to uh, it's coming to this. Uh, it's coming in. It's going gonna, it's, um, it's gonna to be very conclusive very soon. And uh, thanks for coming on to the Sportscast. Thank you, man. Appreciate it.